Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I'm not used to walk the talk, as Eve did yesterday. <laughs> uh, Yvette, paradoxically, rather stands still, even when she's talking about cultural uh, mobility or cultural dynamics. I'd like to present the evolution of the last few years of the Latin American social studies generated at the Centro Latinoamericano Suizo, putting emphasis on the young talents whom we meet every day at our university, and I'm glad to support, to uh, promote, to st stimulate. Uh, I, I start also telling a story, uh, presenting a model, one of a, an, an outstanding student, some of you know him, uh, highly talented, he's called Michael Tuil. I had the privilege to supervise two uh, of his four theses he wrote because he did a double degree at our University of International Affairs and Economics. Uh, in 2009 and 10, he was working on inclusive business in Latin America, and most important, and the most important and pioneering informants he had, uh, he found, guess where, at Fundación Avina uh, in Argentina. I recall his fascination about his meeting with the Avina representatives, already fully embarked in the inclusive business sector at that time. Uh, his thesis was very innovative, creative, because he took the new Sangalen management model, translated it to Spanish first, and then he adapted uh, uh, the model to inclusive business. And the, the bachelor thesis was on um, all the small steps of changes uh, of the adaptation. Uh, and, and I mean, I was choking once with the, with the creator of the new Sangalen management business, and I told him that besides this thesis, or this, thesis, this bachelor thesis, makes him look tired. So the thesis was called um, Inclusive Business in Latin America, Adaptation of the New Sangalen Management Model. Uh, of, Sang uh, of the New Sangalen Management Model. The second thesis he wrote, was one of his two master theses, and he did it in Costa Rica after four months, I think, of, stay, of a stay in Costa Rica with Fundes, and uh, it was co-supervised by Was. And this was called Creating Shared Value, Development of the Concept and Application in Costa Rica. Then he did a second bachelor thesis in 2008, I mean a first one, uh, uh, supervised by Christoph Frey, who moderated the first panel yesterday. And this was the United States of South America, that was the title, uh, Possibilities and Plausibility of an Integration of the uh, Latin American Countries. So his, um, he has the perfect pro profile of a proto-participant of this event, but he could not come. He wrote me from Douala, Cameroon today. I mean, he could not come today that he has to embark right now in a big new project in Kenya, Uganda. So uh, a terrific talent with a huge potential. Uh, Christoph Frey once commented uh, to me, you know, uh, within a few years, we will say we had the privilege to super supervise one of the CCs of this guy. So that's what he predicted. Uh, so in the meantime, I almost dare to say it has become mainstream what Mikhail did a few years ago. Like in the last five years, perhaps, or six years, which we look now, the, a young generation of researchers at the university concentrate on sustainability topics. Uh, as I said briefly yesterday in the opening, the new generation interested in Latin American studies puts sustainability, sustainability issues on the very top of their research agendas, of their interests. We have counted the thesis written during the last five years, uh, affiliated to the Centro, with striking results, above all in the PhD uh, uh, 40 and in the Bachelor 63 thesis. And when I say sustainability topics, this is really key in the topics, as you can see in some of the titles, some of the examples. Uh, the concrete titles. We have uh, several theses um, 
in, for instance, in the crop uh, production with small producers and their relationship to multinationals, to Swiss multinationals, uh, ethical reflections on that. Food is a very important topic, the water of management too. Uh, there you have the four below, and then you have uh, the topic of renewable energy, as we have a, a full professor here who is dealing with the management of renewable energy. Uh, and then it goes to until the, the role of art in conflict situations, uh, etc. Impact investment is the core topic at our hub in Sao Paulo. The university has a permanent office, as most of you know, in Sao Paulo since 2010. Uh, which will be upgraded, upgraded to a research institute in Sao Paulo soon. So you see that the university invests quite uh, in, in, in Latin America. But we also expand within Switzerland through a product. Uh, th this is a tailor-made program for PhD students in cooperation with other Swiss universities, among them the Graduate Institute, and the Center, for, uh, the Center of Development and the Environment of the University of Bern, also the Universities of Zurich and Geneva. Uh, their governance, uh, management and negotiation are the three core research areas, treated always in a transcultural embeddedness. The same goes for our topic as Hernando de Soto has pointed out in his essay published in the NZZ for uh, the impact measurement and its indexes, so it's always about cultural sensitive sensitiveness. The network character is key, uh, and culture is highly negotiate, negotiable for us, very mobile. Um, and for this, I brought you um, some metaphors, because we always work with the picture superiority effect. So to get to new models of transculturality, of, of, of cultural sensitiveness, of international endeavors, um, we try to, as a starting point, to work with metaphors. One would be the mangrove tree, uh, which replaces the traditional tree, uh, which is static, geometric, um, uh, with deeply rooted, and the mangrove is a nomad plant, so it always looks for new, for new uh, uh, spaces, and the roots are moving, and, and uh, it's it never still, it, it's at a, at a border between salt and sweet water, but it's constantly moving, so this would replace the, the, the tree. And the second metaphor of a whole collection we have of metaphors would be the paravent, the folding screen, because there, if you have a cultural encounter, you can move it around. Uh, you can always uh, have new constellations of distance. It's a little bit transparent. You see the other person, uh, and it's a constant movement there. This dynamic uh, definition of culture is very important. One of my favorite um, definitions of culture in general uh, up there, um, we see it as a flexible condensate of factors which have to be negotiated anew permanently. So it's a constant negotiation. You move your, your folding screen uh, constantly and see uh, the other, and that would be uh, because with all the sustainability topic in social sciences, we always try to include transcultural uh, uh, reflections. Uh, there's one example. I mean, you can take uh, our topic of a research cooperation with the Universidad de los Andes on water management, on, on sustainable projects in water management, and we looked especially at the scaling up process. So every scaling up process goes through different phases, through different spaces, um, uh, and then, of course, it's always um, also a cultural barrier you have to uh, move on to another level uh, in the scaling up process. Uh, we, of course, the starting point was a liter, this project of a liter of light, and then we, we looked at several uh, uh, really um, 
admirable and impressive project. In Colombia, just right now, an assistant of mine is in Colombia with um, a young researcher of Universidad de los Andes, and they're looking at a new case uh, 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 in the Sierra Nevada de Santa Marta, just uh, during these days. Uh, you have this explanation that it's also a culture-sensitive um, uh, process. And of course, in the water sector, uh, talking of cultural sensitiveness, you have to watch the local symbolisms of water, the local attitude to waters. Uh, we have this example of an extreme abundance of water in Colombia in the Chocó and uh, scarcity in La Guajira, so the attitude towards water, of course, is a different one. And then it's more, it's even more... Um, yeah, demanding to see how in the Choco this paradox of extreme abundance but of lack of access to drinking water, how this is managed and what are the, the implications. Uh, of course, uh, there's also the, the indigenous, the Afro-Colombian uh, uh, influences uh, which you have to take into account. So the symbolic uh, value of water is a very strong one, and you have to observe it. Uh, we, you can even analyze the iconographic representation of water. You see, for instance, if you go to Google and look, uh, access to drinking water, you always have pictures with children. It's very uniform. You always have pictures with children close to a tap, to a water tap. And I have a, a last observation uh, regarding the title, because also, of course, the title um, uh, we have at the, the Leaders Forum uh, is very culture-sensitive. Um, um, and also the, 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 the term leader in itself, and there I would give you a last example, um, because why you have to observe cultural issues. The, the term leader, causes very different uh, attitudes uh, towards different types of leadership, of course, but in different le regions of the world, we find more or less marked or flat hierarchies and degrees of loyalty uh, between the leader and his followers, between the manager and his em employees. Um, is he a primus inter pares or is he a patron? Um, when I showed, and that was the, the surprise perhaps, when I showed Colombian students uh, at EAFIT or at Universidad del Norte in Barranquilla, a slide with a collection of attributes uh, of management leaders gathered among Sangalen or Swiss students in class, they were just watching me, the Colombian students, uh, astonished and uh, amazed and a little bit bewildered, uh, because there, there was no critical attitude, as in, in Switzerland, towards managers at all. Um, so the contrast between Swiss and Colombian student at a business school, school couldn't have been bigger. So when here, the, it, it's really a very critical attitude. You have the, mass, uh, the massive loss of reputation of top managers and business leaders perceived as dubious and, and pseudo-charismatic, egocentric, autocratic, uh, etc. In Colombia, it's admiration towards leaders, it's loyalty uh, towards leaders, uh, it's trust, it's strong respect, uh, etc. So um, there you have really a big, big difference in this solely, solely in this term of leadership and leaders. Uh, and such comparisons is ex are exactly what we always try to highlight uh, at the Latin American Swiss uh, center. You have it in this title too, because we always compare, of course, between Latin America and Switzerland. Now, I'm glad to hand over to the rector of INCAE, Arturo Condo, with whom our university has set up a double degree with the SIM, uh, with the Master of International Strategy and Management, whose protagonist, uh, my dear colleague, Günther Müller-Stevens, will give the fourth talk of today. Thank you.